Yo! So I've been talking a lot about Instagram influencers, running shout outs, making sales, all sorts of different topics. But there's one thing I realized I haven't actually touched on that relates a lot to Instagram influencer shout outs and that's setting up your actual page for your dropshipping store. Now, I mean like the actual account, like people are asking me, you know, how I'm setting up the captions for my stuff. That's not what we're getting into. You know, people are saying, do you tag yourself, whatever. I'm talking about the page you would actually tag, you know, your Shopify store's Instagram page. I really wish I actually knew how, and you know, if you guys know the answer to this, drop it in the comments down below so I know, how I can do a screen share like of my phone where it like records it and I can put it on my computer or whatever. That would be super cool, but for now, I guess I'm just gonna throw up screenshots of random accounts and talk over a few main points on how to actually go through and set up your page's Instagram account because it is super important. It relates a lot, which we'll talk about in a second, to how many sales you're getting, the amount of credibility in people's eyes when they actually come across it, all the subconscious opinions and biases are forming immediately when they see it, and all that good stuff that relates to it. So I'm gonna throw up a screenshot here in a second showing just a literally a random Instagram account that I found. It's for a dropshipping store. I'm gonna go through, see what's good, what's bad, what I would improve on, what I do differently, maybe you know what I recommend to you, different tips, and a lot of different things you need to know when setting up your store's page. And even if you have your own page for your store, you know, there's different improvements you can always make. I'm constantly changing mine, adding more content, which we'll talk about in a second, and so many different things. So we're gonna jump into that real quick. Let me throw up a screenshot. This is the page we're gonna be using. We're actually gonna end up going through two pages because you know, as you'll see in a second, there's two different types of pages you can do. This one is where it's just all products, obviously, because they are in the phone case niche. They can't really post too much other content that doesn't relate to that. Obviously, they can incorporate the whole lifestyle, like personal branding, using different influencers and all that good stuff. As you can see, actually, you know, they threw Create Tyler up here. He's actually the co-owner in the store. I do know him a little bit. We've talked a few times, but this is actually his brand. You know, I'm not revealing anything or dropping his secrets because he does promote it on his page, which we'll get into in a second is, you know, how he's leveraging his personal brand to make sales. So it is a really cool page. As you can see, um, I don't know exactly what they've done for followers or to boost that. I'm sure he did gain some from shouting out on his page and his partner's page, but they have 34.8 thousand followers and that's really good credibility. We're gonna talk about credibility first, which is an absolutely huge piece when it comes to your page. Nobody's gonna wanna buy, just get this in your head, write it down, do something. Nobody is gonna wanna buy from a page, a store, a brand, anything that has very little audience size, like, you know, 35 followers or even like 800, you know? It's not credibility, it's not trust, it's not showing. You know, people wanna buy from a really big brand, that's what they wanna do, they wanna buy, they wanna be, you know, it's the social status, oh dude, are you kidding me? You don't have a high fashion phone case? What, you don't have Gucci shoes? Oh my God, yeah, you know, it's that social status, that brand, that like status level that it's given. And I do think they do this really well, which I'm gonna compliment them on, is using the whole like influencer and social status, because they are like, you know, positioned as higher up people on social media with a couple hundred thousand followers. So people wanna attach themselves with that brand because I guess it's considered well known or like socially, it's cool, you know? So you wanna give your store some sense of that, like that whole vibe that you wanna come off in that way. But let's actually dive into their posts and how they're doing things. Actually, no, let's start with the name, the profile picture, and the bio, because that's what's first. The name, good, it's the name of their store. They have in their bio, they have the website, which is the exact same, you know, no different spelling, no spaces or dashes or whatever. The logo shows a phone case, that's cool, I guess if that's their logo. And then going through their posts, you know, they're getting a thousand likes, 1600, 700, so a decent amount of likes, they're getting some credibility. Comment wise, 11, 11, none, none. Oh, you know, they're getting none on some because they turned off commenting, which is actually really interesting. Uh, but yeah, when they do have commenting on, you know, they're getting anywhere from like 10 to 40, I'd say, which is good, you know, they're incorporating that lifestyle. As you can see in this picture, there's like the money, also showing the case, so all that stuff, you know, one with time. Tyler actually holding up the phone case himself, standing with like a good looking photo. Stuff like that where they're just kind of documenting the lifestyle piece and like the whole point behind that is it's showing you like how it's applicable to your life. You see someone standing in the street or what he's doing right here, apparently, you know, it's obviously a green screen, but obviously like he's standing and you know, doing something normal on his phone, which is what you'll be doing. You'll have the case on your phone and that's how it's gonna like kind of portray and play that role in your life. So they're giving you that sense, that vibe right off the bat. They're showing you a practical thing, you know, of what you're gonna be using it for, which is huge. I think a lot of people don't actually do that with their brand or even are aware of it so I hope that helps but their bio itself super good you know their business page it says product or service which is exactly what it is their actual bio super cool they use emojis which is huge I always stress using emojis both in the bio in the picture descriptions and especially if you're running an ad like on my Facebook ads and on my Instagram influencer shout outs same thing I always use emojis in there I'm not gonna actually run down right now and show you how I'm setting that up because that's not the point of this video you know their call to action too it looks really good it says 24 hour sale they have those like hand arrows pointing down I would change and actually add one more uh, both at the front and the back end of where it says 24 hour sale Sale. So that's one thing I changed right there. It's good. You know, like I said, they're a business page. They have the email option button. So super easy for people to get in touch with them, which is huge when it comes to like customer relationship, brand building, and like giving that sense of like, 
being easy to access, you know. I even do that myself in my brand. I hope you guys feel like it's easy to access me, you know, I respond to as many comments as I can. I respond to every single one, actually, if it makes sense and it's not some whack-ass thing, which, you know, some people obviously comment. I see all my DMs, you know, I wake up every morning with at least 30 to 50 new DMs, let alone all the current conversations, and I go through every single one. I take time out of my day, I make sure to do that, because it is important to, you know, have that, you know, a sense of being easy to reach. If you wanna ask me a question, you can do it. If it's a stupid question, I might tell you it's a stupid question if I'm like kinda agitated or having a bad day, so I apologize for that. But usually I'm gonna answer your question and try and you know, actually help you out. If I can't help you out, I do this all the time and I've told people, sorry, I can't help you, I don't know the answer. But that's kinda off topic here. So getting back on point, you know, they are easy to reach, their posts look good, it has really good aesthetics on the page, which overall, like, it's pleasant to look at. Nothing's like really popping out or distracting, it all like flows together super smoothly, which is important. And I genuinely like it, you know, the ratio's great. Like I said, 34.8 thousand followers, they're only following 22. They have 14 posts, so they're definitely doing some boosting, which is fine, you know, I'm not gonna get into that, but credibility for your page, do whatever you have to do to get some followers and some likes, you know? Same exact thing with Facebook, you know, your Facebook page, which is another topic for another day. But the Instagram, in my opinion, is at least a little bit more important, so make sure you have a good page and it looks good. But we're gonna talk real quick about the actual content, like what you should be posting, when, how, all that. So first of all, don't always be pushing an offer. Now, I know this might sound weird to some of you and makes sense to a lot of you as well. You might be saying, oh, well, you know, if you're not promoting something or trying to sell something, how do you make money? Look, it's all the indirect value in building the brand, which is then gonna make you the money on the back end. You know, once you have that actual audience, the email list, you have, you know, the credibility and people actually know your brand, they've built a relationship and formed an attachment to it. So what I mean specifically to that is like, if you're posting on Instagram, and I'm gonna get like super specific in numbers, you're like, not crazy, but like showing you guys my actual ratios and like how I try and structure my post and make my post. So I try and hold a three to one and ideally a five to one ratio somewhere in between there, where for every three to five posts that I make on my Instagram, only one of those says, oh, this is on sale right now, get it for free, or get it for $19.99, just pay blah, 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 whatever, you know, something like that. I try and keep that to a minimum. So like I said, for every three to five regular posts I'm doing, and I'm gonna get into what that means in a second, I'll only be doing one actual promotion post where I'm saying link in bio and trying to actually do a call to action and drive someone to go take an action. So by a regular post, you know, what are you actually gonna be posting for these other three to five or whatever posts? This can be anything. And now it's gonna depend on your niche, like the phone cases we went through, that's kind of a, a harder one, but there are things, I'm gonna throw up a screenshot here in a second of a bikini page. I think this would be a good niche. You know, if you're doing anything related to clothing, you can show, you know, the lifestyle behind that without saying, you know, oh my God, go get this, you know, new shirt for blah, blah, blah in the bio. You know, you don't always need to be doing a call to action. So I'm gonna throw up this screenshot right here. Check this out. This page, bikini.com, their ratio is good. I think it's about a five to one, you know, what I can judge by looking through it. They're posting content that relates to the whole vibe and builds on the aesthetic of the page, which for those of you who don't know aesthetics, I know I used that word earlier in the video, but aesthetics means like just how good it looks overall. You know, does it flow? Is anything like out of place? You know, if nothing's out of place and it looks good, then it's aesthetically pleasing. So they have other content that gives reason to people to follow. Nobody wants to follow your page just because you post a ton of bikinis and are like trying to get them to buy something. You know, you might get a lot of guys, but not actually girls who are the ones buying that product. So you gotta know your audience, know your brand, and know what kind of content you need to put out on a consistent basis to both build that brand and that relationship, but also get a following. Because like I said, why are people gonna follow you if they, you know it's always trying to sell them something? Now, I know we talked about the bio briefing in the beginning, and I showed you the offer they're pushing with that 24-hour sale on the high fashion phone case page. Here's what I recommend doing, or at least you know something I've seen work. And again, you know, test to figure out what works for you. But this is what works for me, this is what I I do. I try and have an offer that's like, claim your free shirt now, you know, follow and then claim your free shirt now. Something where it's like every single person who comes to your page and like engages with your brand does it. You need to try and like, you know, it's hard to explain, but like build that social status where it's like a normal thing to do. You know, you have a jewelry or accessory page and you know, you target the women or whatever. You say, you know, be sure to follow and claim your free bracelet with the link down below. Something like that where it's like so natural, everybody does it, you know, they don't want to feel left out, which goes back to what we said with the whole point of like the social status. So those are definitely the main things you want to be doing. There's obviously important variables that you have have to be focusing on like all the ones that we just covered you know your name your handle on Instagram has to be good and ideally the exact same no variation from the actual domain to your store your profile picture should be the logo also the same exact logo that's on your site you know that's a no-brainer credibility that comes from your following and having good engagement you know an engaged audience and stuff that's just more added credibility which nobody's gonna really mention but subconsciously they're immediately judging you once they see how many followers you have don't push offers all the time like we talked about you don't need to always be promoting if anything that's not gonna get you more sales that's gonna bring you less sales and it's gonna absolutely kill the long-term value and like how long you can really monetize the current audience that you have. Having a good content ratio, like I said, three to one or five to one, somewhere around that range is ideal. A good offer in your bio, something for free or whatever that feels like everybody does it, you know, have that whole social status. And then have it be aesthetically pleasing with all those things that's super
super important. That's what I recommend for actually creating the Instagram page for your store. If I left anything out or you have questions, just drop it down in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. I hope that actually walking through and giving you guys these examples helped. You know, again, if you guys know how to actually share my screen on my phone, I have no idea how to do that. I looked it up, tried to Google it. Couldn't really find any software that does it, but I've seen people do it, so I know it's possible. So if you know that, let me know. I'd appreciate it. But with that being said, be sure to hit that nice looking subscribe button down below if you haven't already and drop a like if you want me to keep doing these every single day. I'm going to see you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace.